Hello everybody, I'm Angel. I am a senior at the Met High School and we're going live from, from the Met. Here. Hello, Jasmine. Hi. Hey. Hello. All right, so introduce yourself. Who are you? Where are you? Where are you? My name is Rainier. I'm a senior at the Met High School located in Justice. Um, I'm Jasmine. I'm also a senior in Justice. This is our advisor, Angel. Say hi, Angel. Happy <laughs> BP Living Day, everybody. All right, so what do you guys want to show us today? Um, so first, I guess we just wanted to show the stuff that we have in our building. Come on, Rainier. <laughs> Let's go. Just show, like, I guess the way that we display in each building um, BP Living. So here we have all the individual measures. We have QR code leads to the website so they can learn more information. Um, we also give out stickers constantly. Oh, we'll see if we can spot one. Um, in the building, to the students. Oh, here's one right here, actually. Um, a little outdoor. Yeah. And Jasmine, just to make sure, you said that you could find those posters on the website, right? Yes, you also can find it on the website, along with many other services. All right, um, so if any of you guys out there want to have those posters for yourself, you could find it on the website. Yeah. Right, where are you taking this now? Um, as I'm right now, um, I want to talk. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the most successful activities we've done throughout the school um, okay. for BP Living. One of the biggest ones was the sports tournament that we did amongst the school um, in the student body. So we did a volleyball tournament, which Rudier actually can talk about a little, a little bit more depth because he actually played, and um, also a capture flag tournament. So that was amazing. We also had a healthy eating program where we taught what it looks like to, to fuel yourself correctly. And I actually made a vegetarian or vegan meal during each session. So we work with each advisory individually to get them to get a better understanding. Um, Rina, would you like to talk about it a little bit more? Yeah. So the sports tournament, we did capture the flag, uh, we did volleyball, it was a major success. So, um, the tournament I personally had, I had a lot of fun. Um, what we did, what was yeah. <laughs> um, it's hard to talk about. There's so much to talk about, to be honest. But one of the main things that we did, uh, it was a major success because we grouped up all the students together. Um, we really all got to know each other a lot. I was how, how did you personally like participating in the tournaments? How do you think the culture was cultivated through the, throughout the tournaments? Um, I really liked it. I think that helped the culture a lot at the Met, especially during the time after COVID where most students didn't really get to know each other that much yeah. as well. Uh, it was just really fun. It's like, I, it's one of those days I wish I could go back. All right. Also, I need some redemption too, because I kind of lost hey, it. I see that you guys are outside. What are we doing outside? Oh. What are we doing outside, Jasmine? All right, so right now we're actually going to go to the display table that we have for BP Living. Um, the school's been really busy since it's the end of the year, and the seniors have a lot of um, things they have to catch up on, along with an internship day for after school. Um, so it's been really busy lately with the seniors and the end of the year. Um, so there are valedictorian speeches happening with each senior right now, um, along with it being an internship day. We really want to focus on more of the virtual and digital events. Uh, but still wanted to give some space for students to independently explore what BP living is and what it lo could look like in their lives and what it looks like at the school. Um, so all of the students actually have a BP living smart goal on their individualized learning plans, which is amazing. Um, but, you know, obviously they still might not completely explore as much as they would like or as much, well, as, much as I would like, you know. Uh, so here we have this table Just with different things for each measure. For example, we have Nourish, um, they can enjoy some water, and we have healthy snacks such as cranberries, a nut mix, and dried fruits. Um, we have the color by measure, which you can find on the website, um, where they can, you know, just draw, and it's a little hard, but, you know, what's life without difficulty? Um, and then there's Chill, there's a rock activity where they can decorate the rocks with positive messages and drawings uh, to, and to spread across campus. For MOVE, we actually have the volleyball net set up for the afternoon, so students can enjoy that on their free time. You can pan over that way. And then Recharge, we do have just a few paper resources that they can take along the way. Um, yeah, so it's just when students are in class and, you know, grinding away, they can come here and see what they want to do and explore it on their own, along with going to the Zoom calls. So I can't wait for especially lunch. 
when everyone's outside. Rainier, what do you think? He's speaking right now. We okay. can't hear him. We can't hear you guys. Oh, there we go. Can you yes. hear me? We good. All right. I was just asking how easy it was to put all of that together. Um, I would say short term, it was a bit hard. I realized how hard it would be to find um, like individual packaged healthy snacks. It's a lot easier to find like gummy bears and um, chocolates as opposed to like freeze dried fruits. Um, but I would say overall organizing it has been as, as easy as it could be, especially because I have a great team supporting me and um, students and peers like, like Rainier who helped me along the way whenever I need it. So yeah. All right, that sounds great. Um, anything else you want to share with us? Rainier, anything else? Happy BP Living Day. Yeah, I hope you have a great BP Living Day. All right, and I'm Get going out. to ask about some of the culture at the Met. Um, how do you think uh, the students are uh, receiving the BP Living measure uh, movement at, on campus? I think it depends on which measure we're talking about specifically. Overall, there are a lot of students that know about it, but I think just like everything at the Met, it's if you have to take what you know, you do with what you want with it. Um, so there are some students who I see focusing on three measures at a time and, you know, going to the gym and playing sports because they want to improve in specifically those measures for BP living. And there are students who just only eat like the vegetarian option at lunch um, because it's not as, as big yeah. as an influence in their lives. Um, but it, I, you do see it each individually, even if so, something as small as social and seeing people come together and the culture change amongst the campus. Um, I have seen a, a big impact in as a ball. All right, I, I want to open the floor now for anyone that's watching. If you guys have any questions, and while they're answering, they're typing in their questions. Jasmine, do you want to um, talk about how you joined BP Living and what got you to uh, really um, start the work with BP Living? Yeah, sure. So, um, what really got me into BP Living was um, during COVID, um, and it was still developing as some random healthy living thing. I um. I, my mental health was really declining and I kind of realized that the different aspects um, of your like the way you live physically does affect you mentally and emotionally and I wanted to kind of have that opinion and that perspective to influence people and I guess have someone to relate to because when people do focus a lot I think on physical health as opposed to mental and emotional health at times so um yeah and then I was really able to step into my own um, in 11th and now 12th grade um, with spreading it amongst the culture as, you know, COVID restrictions have lessened and, um, and we've really come together as a class. That's great. All right. Um, it doesn't seem like we have any questions, but it's, again, I want to invite anyone that has questions to go ahead and put those in the chat and then we could answer it for you. Um, Rainier, um, how about you? How do, how do you, th I know you're not as involved as Jasmine with working directly with Deep Living, but I know you live that mindset and that lifestyle. So I um, want to talk about your journey. My journey with BP Living, overall, I love it. You know, I made a commercial with you guys, Angel was featured in it. But uh, some of the ways I use BP Living myself is uh, especially move. I always love to go outside, move and uh, exercise, whether it's cardio or just even playing a simple pickup game of basketball or even just playing baseball or just trying new stuff as well, any new sports. But that's the main measure. I've also been working on recharge, so I, I feel great right now because I'm very well rested. I was very excited right. for this day. That sounds great. We do have a question in the chat. Um, Jasmine, what is, what is the measure you have been working on? Okay. Um, I would say the biggest measure I'm constantly actively working on is recharge. Um, okay. Usually because I'm doing a lot of academic work, I don't give a lot of time to, um, to sleep. I'd say chill as well. Um, I do overall, but you know, I would say being at the Mets kind of like a double-edged sword where um, you are allowed to like, you have a bunch of freedom. So I end up giving myself too much work. So I try and dedicate at least an hour a week to, um, to doing something like crafting or doing something that I love and relaxes me. Um, yeah, I got to up it maybe to two hours, but that's something that I definitely try and focus on and make it a point to do. Yeah, I think it's a journey that you've been working on and you're doing a great job on it. <laughs> um, all right, so if you don't have any other questions. How about you, Angel? What about well, incorporated BP Living? Uh, what was your question again? Now, how, how do you use BP Living? How do I live BP Living? Yeah. 
How do you? Um, how do you do? I live to be feeling. Uh, I mean, all types of ways. Just socializing with people on campus. I I make uh, an effort to say hi to everybody I see on school. Um, I also play uh, sports. I play volleyball for Central High School. Uh, yesterday we just won our quarter fi uh, finals. Uh, so we will be moving on to semifinals. Yeah, go, go, go Knights, go Knights. Um, um, something that I, I think I need to work a little bit more on is, like Jasmine said, recharge. It's, it's a little harder for, I think, younger students just because we think that there's so much we have to do. But um, I think there's just taking time to really um, have time to sleep and take care of myself. Um, any other questions? Angel, that was an amazing answer. Amazing. Loved it. Thank you, Jasmine. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. We will say bye to you now. Thanks for having us. Goodbye. Bye. Hello. How are you guys today? Hi. We're great. Amazing. How are you? We're good. We're good. We're matching. Look at us. Oh, Wearing your <laughs> shirt. All right. So introduce yourself. Where are you from? Monique and Tyson, and we're in Newburgh, New York, and we're so excited because it's BB Living Day at NFA West. We're so excited to show you guys what we're doing today. Look, um, it's like Monique. Donnie wants to say hi. I have to see y'all real quick. <laughs> Keep on rocking. Hey. Yeah. What do, you, what do you guys want to show us today? Oh, good. Yeah, what we're doing. So, in the morning, we've been kind of like doing the six measures all day. So in the morning, we had some students share a presentation about caution, where we talked about drug use. Um, and then after that, we did move, where we did some dance, a little hip hop. Then we did recharge, where I shared some sleeping, uh, how to sleep better, how to sleep, how to improve your sleep. I used the things I learned from Dr. Davis. Okay. And now we're having our nourish session. So we're having the meditation room open at our school, and we're also making smoothies in the gym, and we have oh. some turkey dogs too. So we have a whole lot going on right now. Yeah. Just send me some smoothies. What have been your favorite activities today? Favorite um, activity? Probably the one that I'm so sad I missed, but probably the move one, because you know, I like a little hip hop. Okay. Love. I was there. I was there. <laughs> you have to share your Zumba. <laughs> they were doing Zumba earlier, so I wish I was there for that one, because I would have what a set me for the day, you know? Yeah. Right. So this is welcome to our meditation room. And this offers a place where stress is not a thing. So you come on in. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah. Look, really here. calming in there. I wish I was in there right now. Right? Like, it's very calm. We have music playing in the background. We have lights. We have that on the floor. We have the option of color. We have... Just, this is a place that offers a unique style of meditation in a school building, which is very not seen. So, how, how often do you get to use the meditation room? How often? How often? Every time it's open. Every time that we're able to come in here, I'm like, let's get on a couch where I can read a book. So in this corner, there's a reading nook. That's my favorite part. I get to okay. set out into my book and just unleash into another realm. So you want to go over to the smoothie part? Yeah. Yes, I'm trying to see some smoothies. Yeah. Um, so do you guys have the, it, like, what, what are the smoothies? Like, what are they made from? We're going to learn. Yeah. yeah. Let's look at our smoothie. Come on, man. Oh, okay. So, so Melissa? Yes to the warrior's plan. Yes to the protein. You don't know how much <laughs> How popular do you anticipate it to be? What was the question? How popular do you anticipate it to be? How 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 busy are you guys gonna be today? So we have we had <laughs> people sign up trying to okay. get into the park. So of course not everyone's gonna be able to have the chance of receiving a smoothie, but we're trying to have everyone have access to a certain um and here our here's the teacher and she's bringing some more <laughs> ingredients. You guys you guys should put out the ingredients to have people do it at home. Exactly. Yeah. 
So that's what we'll be teaching the students here. And so we'll be teaching them what ingredients that they can just buy at the grocery store and make it at home. Sounds great. Hey, that's that's a great plan. All right. And we also have the we also have therapy. <laughs> this is at nourish because we just because we're feeding ourselves the right food or exercising for the right amount, how many steps we get, we also have to make sure our mental health is uh, up to par. And we're, we can't do it all by ourselves. So we actually have some friends here that are offering the help that we uh -huh. desire. So did you guys want to introduce yourself as uh, your well, I'm Raina Corman, and this is Montague, better known as Monty, and he's a two-year-old. Uh, uh, he's a poodle poodle, real poodle. Poodle. Not a poodle poodle. Not a poodle poodle. <laughs> Hi, my name is Bud, and we're all both members of Hudson Valley Cause for a Cause, which is a therapy company providing emotional and uh, just kind of a little bit of happiness for everybody. This is my dog, Ivy Grace. She's a old white golden retriever in a wheelchair, obviously. And Hi, have you guys, Tyson, and have you guys gone in there, going to uh, pet the, the dogs yet? Yes, we had, we had our time with the dogs. Absolutely. I we, ran in here when she said they were in here. I was ready. I was. She was feeling ready. smooth, feeling calm. Sorry? Feeling calm? Feeling calm. Oh, yes. I ran up to them. It's like... You don't have to worry about if they're judging you. You don't have to worry about if you're doing anything wrong. They'll let you know if you're doing anything wrong. <laughs> they are just the sweetest little things. Uh, they're just so soft. So cool. <laughs> when you don't have a dog at home, I had to be here. I had to pet the dogs. I, you know, that's my, my witch. My <laughs> I think I'm going to need a little bit from everything today. I need some smoothies. I need you to ship a dog over. I, come on. <laughs> Keep it all to yourselves now. You want to show them the exit tickets? The exit tickets. So we have some different options. Um, we have some uh, posters out here in the hallway. And they kind of show um, each, each thing over here. We have depending on which station that you went to for that day. So for me, I went to recharge. So recharge, did I improve my sleep? What did I learn? Um, for me personally, I learned like the different kinds of sleep. You know, you get REM sleep, you have light sleep. Fun fact, when I go to sleep, I'm a very easy sleeper, right? So I go to sleep in the car a lot and switch in my sleep. Like I would like, like I'll kick something in front of me and I'll like wake myself up and I was like, what is that? But today, I learned that that's just because that's something that happens when you're in the lightest stage of your sleep. That means I wasn't really sleeping for real. I was like in the lightest stage. So fun fact, I learned something. So that's great. We also so did caution. That was our first um, workshop of the day, and we we examined how it can affect you. And peer pressure is a big usage of why kids are becoming attracted to substances that are not the best for them. So yeah. with caution, we were able to examine the the like the falses of what we might trick our brain into. So if your friend's doing it, you wanna feel cool. Or yeah. even when you're having a bad day, you wanna escape and we, we find that what's the easiest thing that can make you lose sight of what's going on? And that's with the substances. So through caution this morning, we were able to teach uh, the whole school as a whole, actually. We weren't just with a certain group of kids. We did this publicly to all the students. So everybody knew because that is uh, really important in our community right now. It seems like you guys have a packed day down there at NFA West. Yeah. Um, it sounds really cool. I wish I was down there with you guys. I'm going to leave you guys with one question. How supportive do you guys feel with the school, with living that big picture? How, how has your school been so supportive of this um, endeavor that you guys have been taking on? Um, I would say 
probably the relationships is where I feel more supported at. Um, usually in a traditional school, like middle school, elementary school, I never really felt that relationship that I had with my teachers. Um, it was really hard for me to like share my feelings. I'm just more so a close off person when it comes to that. But I came to NFA West and it was like teachers were like pointing out that I was feeling sad and I didn't even know I was feeling sad. And then I talked to them about it and then I feel like I get everything off my chest. So I feel supported emotionally and immensely. Yeah. That's great. And they know when you're struggling, not just mentally, but academically, and they're able to reach out. And uh, our school is not the biggest. So they're able to take you aside and coach you and teach you on what you need to know. So it's not like I'm getting left out. We're not uh, a number in a group. We're like, we have individuality in a whole, which is what I really love about being in a big picture learning school. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys for answering. I'm so envious of your day out there. I wish I was there with you guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys later. We will be going back live with Pina Rod Reynolds in just a little bit. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness. Hello. <laughs> we have connected the dots. Yeah. Yes, through the magic of yeah. technology. Where are my team? We're in the green. Who's wearing green out there? Uh, we are. I'm here with Angel. Hello, how are you guys today? We are doing so well. We're super excited about today. Yeah. We are just super excited about everything you you guys are doing. I mean, the, we're huge fans of the Met School uh, oh. in Providence, Rhode Island. Paul Reynolds is my twin brother. I was born with my best friend. He's, yeah. 14 minutes older than me, even though I look about 20 years older than him <laughs> with my beard. He's been doing a lot of living. Yeah. <laughs> I've been living. Yeah. I got a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm so impressed with, you know, how the wisdom of the Met School and about the big picture uh, living uh, movement. And it is a movement, you know. Yeah. And it's cool that we're using Instagram and technology to spread the word because, you know, there's certain things that the world needs to know. Um, you know, it, it's almost frustrating, right, when you find something so good and you're like, everyone should know about this. And so we're super excited to um, to say something. Uh, by the way, folks out there, I'm a picture book uh, writer and illustrator. Some people call them children's books, but I believe that picture books are for all ages. And especially us adults, we kind of need things spelled out to us a little more simply. Um, yeah. Because we we write adults tend to complicate things, and that's why it's so cool that um, this project has been fueled by students. You know, because mm, right. you guys know you're on the front line. You're you're li you are living it, right? <laughs> you're living it, and just you know, and a shout out to all big picture learning schools because really around the world this happened, and it happened during the middle of a pandemic, and which I think is so cool that you know when everybody was was. Uh, you know, uh, hungering down in their houses and, and, and pulled apart, you guys were connecting the dots around the globe to say it's time to do a reality check on what what is learning at school all about. And it's not about digesting content and getting tested. It's about actually learning how to live right. and live successfully. It's kind of cool because right? you just said learning in school, which, right, we hear about all the time. You learn in school, but do you live in school, yeah. right? Because you actually are living every day you're living so we have to think about how are we living in school and as this project points out you know that you know memorizing stuff learning stuff is just set one little piece of that you know like like i love the fact that you know we're focusing on how much you sleep because i'm you know i'm like i'm bad because i i burn the candle at both ends and i know it's not good for me and i have been actually been inspired by this project to be more intentional about getting to sleep yeah. <laughs> and, and recharging my batteries because I can't, I'm not good for other people and I'm also not good for myself right. if I'm burned out. Right. And I know, you know, kids have the same thing. You got a lot on your plate and there's also a lot coming in through right. social media, right? right. <laughs> Keep you busy. Right. Yeah. During the pandemic, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Angel. I was gonna say, we're honored that you're a big fan of us. We're a big fan of you guys. <laughs> and the movement you guys have started. Um, so 
So I want to talk a little bit about International Dot Day. I mean, you guys have really pioneered the way of creating this movement and doing it successfully, and that's something that we're, we're trying to get some inspiration from. Um, so just I wanted to get some advice, some words of advice from you guys on how we could do this successfully and in a way that gets people um, involved. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. And I wrote this book 20 years ago. And if you know this book, um, I don't have to tell you that it's about a little girl who says she can't draw. And uh, if you don't know the book, the, uh, it's really also a story, not just about drawing, but it's about just expressing yourself and you, know, you got something inside and you know, you kind of have to be brave to share with the world because you're putting yourself out there, you put yourself on the line. And I wanted to write a book that would encourage people to, uh, to express themselves bravely, to create bravely. And I'm adding live bravely today because, you know, it's hard. It's hard. So I wrote this book and it went out there and the cool thing was teachers found it and they said, hey, teachers I, and students, teachers yeah. and students. Right. but teacher, you know, some creative teachers like Terry Shea in Iowa who said, this is, we need more of this, you know, maybe one of the things that's missing in public education is creativity. And wouldn't it be cool if we could just celebrate creativity, just like take a day off and just celebrate. Like today we're celebrating, right? This idea of, of living, living big. And um, the, so he started, he started something in his classroom and of course social media started spreading. We heard about it. We said, Terry, we're gonna help you spread the word because we think it's really important. So we, we just helped shape, we create a little website so that people could go, they could register. And then we had hundreds of classrooms, thousands of classrooms, millions of kids and teachers around the world. Right. And I think we reached what, 190 plus countries? Yeah, we're actually technically 200, we've reached 200 countries and sovereign territories around the globe. And I, we're over 26 million participants. And that all happened because of a group of students and a teacher in Iowa who connected the dots with other people who thought it was important to do. And through in a connected universe with a with a, a relevant message, an authentic message, it can spread like wildfire. And we and we we saw that happen. I totally think that big picture living day is gonna be one of the catalyst moments. Wouldn't it be cool, you know, five, five years from now, ten years from now, when we're saying, Wow, tens of millions, why not hundreds of millions? Um, I mean, you know Yeah, it's it it is an idea that needs to be spread around the world. And I was just thinking creatively on the spot that maybe September 15th ish, which is when dot day is maybe big picture uh, and, you know, and the and dot day could combine. Maybe sure. we could get big picture schools to to help you celebrate. Right. And, and of all the schools out there, right, you guys really are super creative and innovative. So maybe you'll have cool ways of celebrating. Right. You know, if you go to international dot day dot org. You, mm -hmm. It's basically a digital toolkit, mm -hmm. which is super easy to, to sign up and get information, some downloadable guides and posters. If for some reason you, if you get inspired and you think, oh, it would be cool if you did this kind of poster, or this kind of certificate, just let us know and we'll, we'll create it and put it on, on the site. Um, but that'd be cool yeah. to and, connect the movements. And yeah. that's Good. what we're also modeling for Big Picture Living is so we have bpliving.org and on there, it's funny you mentioned the posters because yeah. Angel created posters and then we had another school go, hey, we would love these in Spanish. And so we had awesome. uh, students translate them into Spanish and put their spin on them. The character designs we have are made by nice. Zed in um, yeah. India at the next school. Yep. So we got, <laughs> it, 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 it's kind of fun to see these little, not like these, I'm, I'm always inspired by the poster piece that you made where it's like start small to dream big mm -hmm. and it's a small dot and the big dot. And right. I feel like that, that's what Dot Day started as and has become. And that's yeah. what I know <laughs> Big Picture Living will be as well. Yeah. Well, we're, we're super excited to help spread the word. And, you know, the cool thing is that we all have this super powerful broadcasting system in our back pocket. Right? We're carrying around technology that is you know, 20 years ago would have cost at least $100,000, probably more. And, 
and it's kind of cool that we can we can broadcast. I call it broadcast the revolution, right? Yeah. I'm also I'm looking for the gentle rebels, right? The gentle rebel is is a word that uh, words we use to say we want to change the world, but we want to do it peacefully, right? And <laughs> no one gets hurt during this revolution, but we need a revolution because this world is in in a tough spot, and we have the intelligence and the creativity and the energy to make it a better world and you know but we have to kind of make that a, a right. priority we have to say we have to say something <laughs> yeah say something. i wrote this book uh six years ago uh kind of in response to looking and say hey do you know what there's some very nice people out there um and who we you know we don't hear your voices and i have noticed that hate is really loud and that kindness is really soft, right? So we have to amp up kindness and kind of, you know, drown out the, that, the hate out there because, you know, there actually are some really, like mostly amazing people on this planet. Um, and there's some haters out there. Uh, we just gotta let them know that there's more, <laughs> there's more good than, yeah. than bad, more dark, I mean, more light than dark and that together we can make this world a better place. I've, I've been watching comments coming through, and I, you know, I know. Hello to our friends in Ireland. I saw Ireland. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> yeah. The green, you like oh, yeah. the green? You like the green? With Argentina <laughs> yeah. earlier, yeah. Right. Oh yeah, Argentina. That's little... where our dad was born in yeah. Tanville, yep. in Argentina. And uh, my middle name is Hamilton. Yep. Based, our grandfather was born in Hamilton, New Zealand. So anyone from Hamilton, New Zealand, out there? Uh, <laughs> and I think maybe Turkey. Right. Yeah, Maybe we have some folks in Turkey, yeah. Merhaba to anybody. Oh, yeah, Merhaba. <laughs> and, and everybody, help us broadcast the revolution. Help us yeah. spread the word uh, in any creative ways you can. Definitely f uh, follow Big Picture. Um, you guys on Instagram, of course, you're Big Picture Living. Big Picture Big Living. Picture. Yeah. And um, you just check them out. And if you're lucky enough to go visit the school, which Paul and I did, which, by the way, Dennis Litke, who is like one of our heroes? He invited us to for a tour. One of the the, the first big picture living school, right? Yeah, right. And and he yeah. invited us to the school. He said, um, uh, "Come down for a tour." So we arrived, and he gave us these colorful sneakers. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's his 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 he thing, loves, right? He loves colorful sneakers. Yeah. So he gave yeah. us the sneakers, and then he said, "I'm I'm leaving," and we're like, "Oh, we thought we were getting a tour." So he went to a door, he opened up the door and there are like 14 kids. And he said, I'm not gonna give you the tour. The kids are gonna give you the tour. They know the school better than me. And it was so cool that it was really student powered and like that, that Dennis believed and all the adults involved in big picture, they believe that kids are, they, they actually have all the, you know, the intelligence and the creativity to run the show. And it's hard for adults yeah. to like let go and say, hey, we're gonna let the kids run the show. But if you trust kids, you know, it's amazing what will happen. So yeah. super excited. So we, I just want this to, uh, to spread like wildfire. And by the way, you don't have to be a big picture living school uh, to be a big, right, picture. a big picture school. Right? Learning school. Learning school. Right. It, it, all schools are invited. So we're kind Everywhere. of taking, this project is kind of extracting the, the magic and DNA and mm -hmm. kind of sprinkling it around the world. So you could be in a public school in Chelmsford, Massachusetts, or in, you know, in Paris, uh, in a school, and you can incorporate it. Or if you're not in school, maybe you're, you, you, you're in school or, or you work at a carnival, a uh, traveling carnival, you could still, right. right, on this, right, this app that, right, is being developed. Right. Yep. Yep. We have the website. Yep. And the yeah. website. Yeah. And the website. Yeah. So anyway, we can so we'll throw it back to you guys. Yes. Yeah. Because we could we could ramble on all we get so <laughs> we get so excited, like our heads are gonna explode. So before that Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I just want to say thank you for joining us. Every single word was super valuable to us. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say thank you to everyone that joined today. Um, and definitely what you guys said, um, please join us in this movement. If you're wearing green today, make sure to tag us at BB Living. Um, we will be out here today celebrating Big Picture Living Day. It's all about self-care um, and really take, putting yourself first today. Um, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, yep. so, that is so cool. And you know, that's kind of hard, like, because there's this idea of like, you know, self-care 
some people get that confused with being selfish, right? And it's like, no, self care. Yeah. Take care of yourself, people. Yeah. And, you know, I love that, you know, just it's so, when you hear it, it's like it's so simple, but, you know, we need to be reminded to, right, to, to move. Because mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of us are very stationary. We need our sleep, right? We also have to work on our stress levels. We yeah. tend to get, we, we get burdened and by eat, that stress. Right. Eat better. Actually, this is the, this movement actually changed the way I eat. Yeah. I actually, I uh, gave up meat. I'm plant based because of, because of big picture living. And that happened about a year and a half ago. And I feel so good. Yeah. And I, I yeah. do, I have not looked back at meat and I like, I am so excited about my food and I yeah. eat a lot of food and I've actually lost weight and I feel better. And, uh, and when and you it, feel to big picture living that, that actually yeah. happened. So, and Thank when you. you feel good, right, you don't need to medicate. And there are people who are medicating yeah. with drugs, alcohol, um, and other things that are, are trying to make them feel better. And it, you know, I get why they're doing it, but they don't, you don't have to, if you take care of yourself, right. And then mm -hmm. one of the things we'll let, end on this note that, you know, it's about, you know, great relationships and friendships. You don't need 5,000 friends. You need a circle of people who love you. And that might be one other person, right? right? I happen to be born with my best friend, Paul mm -hmm. Reynolds, but I also have my circle of people who know, really understand me and get me and let me be, you know, uh, uh, you know, not perfect. And, yeah. but encourage me to be better and also encourage me to get my sleep and eat better because it's kind of hard to do it by yourself. So find, find a friend, someone who loves you, cares about you. Right. They'll take care of you. Maybe they'll take care of you. Right. And um, uh, we wish everyone out there a, a big, big living life. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. All right. Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Live it big. Big. Live, Live it big. Living it. Hello, everybody. How are you guys today? Good. How are you guys doing? I'm good. Thanks. Uh, and want to introduce yourself? Where you? Where you? Where currently are you? So uh, my name is Dana, and I am the LTIC at North Bay Med Academy. We're in Windsor, California, so it's 9 o'clock in the morning here for us. Oh, nice. Bright and early out there. Uh, what, do you, what do you want to show us today? So we got a couple of different things that we want to show you. So I'm going to start off. We're gonna, you're just going to take a tour of our school, and uh, we're going to start off with Jeremiah, who is our Writing for Focus uh, coordinator, and he's here with a couple of students. I'm also here with my dog, Marley, who, uh, he's one of our honorary members. Aww. Yeah, so he rides with us as well. And I've got a couple of our students. In fact, uh, Jake, you just go ahead and pan through. This is our Riding for Focus program. And so uh, we have 15 mountain bikes that we were able to receive through uh, grant funding through a variety of nonprofits that are supporting the school. And we ride two times to three times a week in the morning, first thing. And the point of our class is uh, to not only give the kids a chance to come together, to get uh, more kids on bikes, get outside, but to really work with some of the historically challenging things about school where being in a classroom, forced to kind of sit and be in that enclosed space is really challenging for some of our students. So being able to come to campus, get off campus, ride bikes, um, come together, get some exercise, some energy out, um, it's a pretty cool thing. So uh, come on over this way, I'm gonna show you guys. So as you walk through, you can see we have a fleet of mountain bikes. They're color coordinated, so the kids basically figure out their color based on their size, and they always go ahead and grab that bike every morning. Um, but one of the cool things I wanted to show you is that uh, the Outride Fund is actually the organization that runs this program. It's an a international organization, about 50,000 kids across Canada and the United States riding this year uh, during the school day for credit. And their slogan is, what will you outride? And so these are just a few of the things that our kids talked about. I did my own. And uh, for me, it's really important to outright inside. I love being outside, and I think my students can attest to that. But you can see some of the, the things that the kids are trying to outride, starting the top distraction, boredom, a few of our graduates, they're outriding high school, anger, competitive one, everyone else, procrastination, self-deprecation, uh, anxiety, procrastination, just these things that we can kind of leave at the trailhead or the school or wherever and ride and let go of them through the day. So we're really, really fortunate to have this program. Um, it's growing in Windsor. Our students are um, 
gaining LTIs and internships throughout the community. We have a few students that are working at bike shops now. One who's a graduate who, actually two now who are graduates that both have full-time employment in local bike shops. Uh, who's actually here, Noah, raise your hand. He's uh, working at the Windsor Bike Shop. Uh, and so it's really kind of this, this portal, this pathway into the industry, um, but it's a great way to come together. One of the other really cool things that we're working on is, uh, you know, from our, our local town here, we have Kaiser Park just next to the campus. And um, we are in the process of helping spearhead in a partnership with Windsor Unified Schools, uh, Redwood Trails Alliance, uh, Windsor Parks and Rec, um, and the King Ridge Foundation, another nonprofit partner. We're gonna be building a pump track for our students to be able to ride during the school day and then take on LTIs uh, with Parks and Rec, helping manage the track. And then we have another Riding for Focus program starting at our um, K-8 Language Academy that our students are gonna be able to mentor as high school students and help that program out. So it's this really amazing cycling ecosystem that we built or are building. Um, and it's one kid at a time, one bike at a time, one dog at a time. Um, <laughs> and so uh, we're just really, really fortunate. And so this being the last day uh, that we are in school, we figured what better thing to do than go for a bike ride. So yeah, uh, sounds, yeah. do you have any I was gonna questions? Say, yeah, it sounds great out there. That's, that, that program is something that we used to do here at the Met, and I think it's going to restart next year. It yeah. sounds like a great time. What has been like the long, the, the furthest you've gone to bike with your students? Oh, goodness. Yes. Well, um, a couple years back, we actually did a, an adventure day where we went to one of our local parks uh, and we did about an eight mile loop and oh. we had uh, Allison Tetrick join us. She's an outright ambassador and world champion cyclist. Um, so we got to ride with her for the day, which was amazing. On average, we do between three to five miles uh, a couple times a week. Uh, it's about 20 to 30 minutes. We'll stop and enjoy a park. Um, sometimes we'll let Marley get out and sniff. Um, but really, it's just an option just to get out and enjoy our neighborhood. What's really cool is we start to see neighbors in the community, yeah. and they, you know, we figure out there when they're having their morning cup of coffee or coming out <laughs> or whatever. And now we're getting waves, and so it's a pretty cool thing. That's, so, that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, do any of the students want to say something? We got about a minute left or a little bit less. Anybody want to comment on it? Oliver, do you want to? You're graduating. How about Oliver? Oh. <laughs> Oliver's been with us for four years. I don't know if you're back late because of the sun. Come over here. Oh, well, yeah. I won't be able to see if I go <laughs> So how how is having writing for folks always been important for you? Well, it's just been really helpful to have something to get out in the morning. You know, when I get up, I'm super tired. I really don't want to do anything. And this kind of just gets you gets you primed for the day. Yeah. You're out. You have energy. Yeah, like, it's nice. Yeah. So I know we're running short on time. I want to say thank you to everybody out there. We're psyched to be on Instagram Live with you. And, uh, yeah, keep on riding, one kid at a time. Sounds great. Hey, keep riding. It, it sounds great. I hope you guys have a nice ride today. All right, cheers. All right, Dana's got the mic. Okay, we're going to walk over. Actually, we were going to follow them right out, but uh, we're, gonna ride we're, we're there right now, too. So we're going to walk Bikes out guys, over here grab your helmet, grab your bike. Let's go. and get us to our garden. But first, we want to um, thank all the people who have approached us and supported our program so we're just gonna pan on our sign um and these are all the individuals that have supported our program right outright uh brad foundation we act sonoma county water windsor rotary windsor rotary sorry and sonoma county beekeepers um and yesterday if you checked out our uh instagram live we had actually a split in our hive and uh so we had beekeepers come here and take some of the bees and relocate them um, anyway, so now I'm going to turn it over to Shannon Johnson, who is our one-to-one -one advisor, and she and Meadow are going to talk about the garden space and how do you create a garden and an urban environment. Take it, Shannon. Um, so this, this garden here was started because we didn't have, like, this is a parking lot, um, so we got a grant to put, um, use these grape bins to make our garden, and so it's been it's definitely a doable thing actually we have two bookshelves that um, came out of a classroom and the students decorated and so these guys are bookshelves um, so it can be done and during the drought we were really concerned about water and so we were able to get another grant um, to put in a rainwater catchment system so it's a big issue with urban areas for runoff and this slows the water down sinks it and stores it so 
we were able to water our garden this year all the way until May 18th without using any any potable water. It was all water from our from our um, clean water. So do you want to talk a little bit about the garden and what you guys do out here? Garden. Typically, Shannon will get the compost and fertilizers to help it grow. Uh, for this bed back here, we put in like fresh potting soil. Well, Shannon did. And fertilizer, we planted beans and pumpkins. Over here, we have strawberries. All right. Oh, they're doing really well. Hi right, guys. Hi. Uh, here's a little bunch of them that we have. Really good. Oh my goodness! Look at yeah. all those. Holy moly! We better pick them. Um, oh wow. Thought we're having a thing uh, barbecue today, so I guess we get some extra food for it, huh? Oh, uh, that's great. Um, I just have one question. What has been the biggest um impact of the having the garden on campus? Yeah. You know, last night we were getting ready for graduation, and it was so sweet. A couple kids were out here taking pictures, grad pictures, next to the plants. And um, I didn't know because I, I'm, my office is far away from here. And it was, it's like part of the culture. People come out here just to hang out and chill. So That sounds great. Hey, uh, Meadow, I know that we've gotten a chance to con uh, conversate a little bit. Um, how have you been, what have you been up to since... Uh, we talked on the podcast recently on Per VP Living. How has your journey been ever since we talked then? Since then, it's been pretty good. I've started to find a really good balance of work, academic, and personal life. And I got a student board position for our district. And I've spent a lot of time in this garden, and I've loved it. That sounds great. Um, I'm glad that your, your journey has been uh, taking you to great adventures. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you're doing well as well also yes i'm doing great thank you um any anything else you guys want to show us today um oh yeah i got it you got it oh yeah. you got it all right Jane is <laughs> all right so our next thing that we're going to talk about is big picture living in our advisory learning plans as well as a full year course and i'm going to turn this over to diana russo who's our counselor here and rachel messenger who's our pe teacher and what they have done to create uh, big picture uh, living environment within our school culture. So here we go. Hi everybody, I'm Diana Rudisol, I'm the academic counselor. And I just wanna say before we talk a little bit about our course, it's not just North Bay Met who has a philosophy of health and wellness, actually our district is a huge supporter of the health and well-being of our students. Um, one of the things I love about and appreciate about our district is we have had a five credit health course as a graduation requirement for over 20 years. And they expanded it this year by encouraging all of the schools to open it up to a full year course. And what we've done here at North Bay Med Academy is written a full year big picture living course for all of our students, which incorporates the health content standards along with the six measures of big picture living. And we're a big believer of the blue zones as well. We find that the blue zones and big picture living are really closely re related with nourish, plant-based diet, the social connection with the blue zones, uh, MOIs and community. Uh, so we're really pleased to be moving forward with that. So I'm gonna introduce you to Rachel, who's our wonderful health teacher, and she's gonna be the one who's gonna be carrying this class into the next year. Hey there, my name is Rachel Messenger, and I have had the pleasure of teaching uh, PE and health to these guys for six, now seven years. And we just completed our semester long health course, but I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to teach a year long health course that I helped develop uh, next school year and school years in the future. So I, I've always included Blue Zones as part of our uh, course content, and I've got a couple of students here who are really interested in talking to you about Blue Zones research. Uh, got a plane going overhead. Yeah, we always have a plane going overhead. <laughs> I just, uh, while you guys are waiting for the plane to go, I just want to know that you know we have also worked with the Blue Zones project, um, and it's great that you guys have also found that as a resource. Um, just um, the similarity within the Blue Zones project and the BP Living um, is really um, out there. Um, so if you guys are interested in learning more about BP, uh, the Blue Zones project, um, there is a whole highlight story on the Instagram account um, where um, I took you guys along with our journey with the Blue Zones project when we were able to work with them in North Carolina. So. Fantastic. That's fantastic. Didn't know that. That's great, the connections. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, if you guys want to learn more about it, it's, it's there on the Instagram account. Great, we'll look into it. Do we have to introduce a couple of our students? 
Yeah, of course, yes. <laughs> so we've got, um, I'll just hand it over and try to see about to eat your strawberry. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Portia. I'm Sienna. Hey, what grades are you in? I'm a 10th grader, gonna be a junior. Freshman, gonna be a sophomore. Would you be able to share just a quick little takeaway from what you learned in the house? Yeah, um, so like I was really podcast. interested in learning about like a different country and like like what the blue zones were because I had no idea what they were and like just being able to research something I had no idea about was really fun and interesting. I had a lot of fun doing that. What country did you have? I chose to research? do um, Australia and so learning about Australia was really fun. Mm -hmm. oh, um, uh, I also did a little project on an island. Um, one thing that I think I really did was just close to kind of my to too, along with the projects. Really yeah, thank okay. you guys. Do you have any questions? Uh, uh, no questions for me so far. Uh, thank you. What, the work that you guys are doing are so um, outstanding. It's something that we've been trying to implement here. We also have uh, uh, BP Living and BP Living Goals are part of our learning plan. So just to know that you guys are also on this journey is amazing. And uh, we will definitely try to be in touch with you guys to get connected with you as well. So thank you guys. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you for you. having us and visiting us. Of course. Well. All right. Thank you guys. See you guys okay. next time. Thanks for